Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Panther Pride here at Marlboro High School. Today, I'm going to be sitting down with our class of 2024 class officers. I'm Risha Kandaria. I'm the class president, and I'm also the student representative on the school committee. I'm a three-sport athlete. Um, I do unified sports. I am the student ambassador for Special Olympics, among other things. Hi, I'm Alexis Ott, and I am class historian. I'm involved in, th- I played three different sports. I did some student council stuff. I was a member of National Honor Society. Oh, and <laughs> Risha wants me to mention that I'm valedictorian. <laughs> Hey, congratulations. When did you find out? Last Thursday, right before I went on vacation. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So that's why you're walking first at graduation. Yes. <laughs> that checks out. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm Luis Oliveira. I'm the treasurer for the class of 2024. I'm into volleyball and ski club. Um, I'm Ray Kandaria, and I'm secretary. And I also am part of the Regional Student Advisory Council and the State Student Advisory Council. And I'm Vice President of Best Buddies. And I also do Unified Sports. My name is Luis Gustavo Bernardes. I'm the Vice President for the Class of 2024. I'm involved in different Unified activities at school, um, the different honor societies, um, soccer, volleyball, and some clubs as well. What's really great for me to see as uh, the communication coordinator for Marlboro High, and I used to be, um, I used to be a teacher here. It's really cool to see that there are so many different opportunities for students in Marlboro High. And I wanted to sit down with you guys just to hear about your experience in Marlboro High. And a lot of what I want to hear is advice that you would give for future students. So if you want to think about eighth graders as being your audience, what do you want to tell them? What do you want to tell your your old self? First, let me jump to. Does anyone want to share what their plans are for after graduation? You don't have to, but if anyone wants to share college plans or work plans or post grad plans, I am going to Bridgewater State University, and I'm going in as an undecided business major. Nice. I'm going to UConn, and I'm going to be a mechanical engineering major. Nice. I'm going to Bentley University for finance and computer information systems. I'm going to Assumption University for economics. I'm going to Bentley University um, for econ with finance focus and public policy. Nice. So I, I really enjoyed like watching some of your journeys. I know some of you a little bit better than others. Risha, I know we sat down like a year ago and I like never did anything with that video, but it was a really great conversation I had with mm-hmm. you in terms of all the things that you're involved in. So you joined as the school committee rep. What has that involved? What do you feel like the, like the takeaway from that has been? So I sit on the school committee and I go to every meeting and I hear about district plans, um, different improvements they're trying to make within the district and all of that. And I think the main takeaway is that like there's so much behind the curtains that we don't see for what our administration does for us and what like the mayor does for us and the superintendent. And it's just so incredible to see all of that come into play and how really amazing our district is with um, really valuing the student experience. Yeah, there's so much that goes into every single decision that's made, whether it be um, having a new course offered here at the high school or a totally different program or improving or like purchasing a new track, right? I know that like we're pushing for that. Um, So yeah, you're right. And everything takes time, but I feel like our school committee members are really invested and really want the best for you all. And so that's good. They're gonna like hearing that for sure. If you had to describe the MHS experience, like, all right, this is what MHS is like, or here are some of the highlights. Does anyone run with that? Like, um, I'd say it really is a community, especially within your grade. You will see how your grade does come together, especially during Spirit Week and things like that when you're competing, but it's all fun. And um, Spirit Week, you'll really realize how much you guys appreciate each other and how much you need to work together to get things done. And it'll kind of just allow you to grow within the four years yeah for sure i think of it like our school is really welcoming i think like we're constantly getting um new students from other countries even from other schools and like we're really quick to get them involved in sports and different activities i think that's like really good to have in a school and i feel like a lot of people um at least i can say that i really enjoyed my high school experience because of like how many friendships i made from people i had never met before Mm. from common goal that we had in a sport or a club or anything like that really yeah 
I would say, as I always say, like, it's what you make of it. And for me, like here, they make it really easy to be a part of like as many things as you want to. I mean, it sounds crazy when you list out a bunch of stuff, but in reality, it's like all the people you meet along the way will like help you do all those things. And a lot of things intertwine, overlap. Like Risha helped me kind of like get out of my shell a little bit with like student council stuff when we were freshmen. And like, because of that, I kind of joined more stuff. So it was more just like, the fact that like if you're just willing to do one thing, then you'll find someone. And once you find someone, you'll find another person. You just grow a whole community for yourself. Yeah. I was just going to say community, too. Like, not just in your grade. Like, the whole school. Like, everyone just ends up coming together. Like, and I just really love that. Yeah. What's been your, like, favorite field day activity? Because, like, I can tell you I love when you guys do the tic-tac-toe because it's, like, <laughs> You, you all struggle so much and it's so <laughs> funny to be like on taking pictures of you guys being like, well, what do I do? And everybody's racing. But like, what's like, what's one of your favorite field day activities or spirit day activities? My favorite is the hula hoop one, um, just because we were really good at it. <laughs> um, we were really good at it and it like allowed us to involve more people, not just the rally reps. But I will say the puzzle piece one this year oh, yeah. was very interesting because it was so challenging and it was the first time we've done it. But I mean, we won yeah. that one too, so. Yeah, you should have seen your um, your physics and your math teachers were like, uh, <laughs> just, oh my God, like it was it was really funny. Puzzles was, was really hard and I was just watching and I was like, please finish it. <laughs> <laughs> the bucket stacking or like the cup stacking. Oh yeah. It's always like the final event, like you have to do well on that or else it could like decide who's gonna be the winner and who's gonna be like the loser. Yeah. And it's like, you have to work together because it's like simple like structures but if you don't do it, like if you don't listen to instructions, like you gotta st stack them up all at the end. Yeah. If you don't do like a simple thing, it can like ruin your time and like ruin your score. Yeah. So some people have said that, that they don't know how they feel about Spirit Week because it like divides the students into grades, but I feel like it's kind of like a healthy competition. And, and like you said, like you're gonna see students in the same grade that maybe don't know each other, but now you're working together, even if it's just to, you know, compete against the other grades. But yeah, I think a little healthy competition and yeah. it gives you a sense of pride. So what color is your class? I know each class has a different Gray. color. Gray. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Were you guys excited about getting gray? No, but well, there's, <laughs> it was very easy to incorporate it with like decorations. We really were able to get creative with it yeah. and come up with things that some teachers maybe have never <coughs> seen before. Yeah. So it was good. Yeah. You like gray, rocking the gray today. Yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna say that there's just like a lot of different shades of gray. So sometimes we're not like we don't look as coordinated as like the white or black. Yeah. But it's still an easy color, so it's yeah. Gray. Yeah. Who came up with the hall design of like oh the places you'll go? Because I remember taking pictures of that and walking through you guys' hallway, and it was just really really cool. I mean, remember. it kind of built up. Um, Shavs and I were talking. And we had the idea about like different like cities and stuff like that. Yeah. And then it all kind of came together. We were trying to come up with like a slogan. So then it was like all the places you'll go. And then we had to, the idea built from there. So we had the planes and then we had the pictures. So it was really like a, all, all of us were working together to kind of just build on the idea. Yeah. And it turned out really well. It was cute. It was really cute. Does anyone want to share anything that you've had to overcome since coming to high school? So you get to high school, and maybe you have some plans, or you want to take certain classes. Is there anything that you're like, man, this was really hard, but I overcame it, and I'm really glad, and I feel like I'm a stronger person or student for it? Like time management, like learning how to like prioritize like certain things, because like when you're in high school, you want to do everything. Like there's a lot of times where I've wanted to do like everything at once, but you had to like either give up certain things or like just prioritize other things if you wanted to like overcome it. Yeah. So like if I wanted to say all my friends are hanging out, I want to go hang out with my friends, but like I have like an AP exam the next day. There's like certain like things you have to give up, but in the end it's all like for the better. Yeah. I think for me, um, like with all my roles, I've learned how to advocate for other people for like Special Olympics, being class president, being on the school committee. Yeah. But I think learning how to advocate for myself mm. and what I need, especially like with time management and just like getting the support I need in some of my classes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's valid. <laughs> um, yeah. I agree with Louise, like especially after freshman year where everything was online and we literally could, like we could do everything at once. And then sophomore year, like when we came in and we still wanted to do everything, like it just wasn't possible to do all those clubs and then to be taking like harder classes and everything, like it, we just couldn't do all that at once. So you had to give up stuff and find out like what really was important enough to keep going. Yeah. 
And do you feel like that you just did that kind of through trial and error or? Yeah, I feel like I just really like didn't know what I did or I didn't want to do. <laughs> so I just was kind of like, I'll just figure it out. Like I'll try everything out. And then yeah. what I didn't like, I was like, you know, like it's okay if everything's not for me. Yeah. I'll just like give that up and work harder on something else. I feel like the pandemic really helped everyone it gave everyone the freedom to say, all right, I can't do everything. It's not possible to do everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna excel at everything and it's okay to say no. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pressure, especially if you're kind of like a like an overachiever, or someone that wants to do really well, or like when your name's on the line or your reputation's on the line, you really wanna do well. Um, it's really hard to say no, yeah. and it's really hard to admit that um, you can't do it all. And so I feel like if there's, there's a gazillion lessons that we could all learn throughout the pandemic, but looking back on that as a parent, as an adult, like that was one of my biggest takeaways as well, as well. like realizing I can't do it all and I don't need to do it all. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for me to let people know, hey, I, I had every intention of doing this. I'm not gonna be able to do it. People are like, oh, okay. Like people move on, they yeah. make other plans. <laughs> the whole world is not waiting for you to do the thing. And um, it's more important to have relationships and uh, be someone that's trusted to be able to say when you can and when you can't do something. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are figuring that out now as you're leaving high school, like that's huge, that's gonna help you a lot because especially if you're gifted and talented and social, everyone's gonna want more and more and more of you. So being able to decide for, for your own self, like is this what's best for me? Is this gonna serve me? And do I have the space and time to do it well? So good job yeah. on figuring that out. <laughs> that's really That's really, really important for sure. Let's see, if you could do high school all over again, what's something that you would change? Maybe one of you two? I'm really happy with what I did do, but I think coming in with a slightly different mindset because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and just like school stuff. And it really hit me hard the first time I got like a 50 on a test and I studied for it. Mm. And I was like, maybe this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. Cause like when you take, harder classes or whatever even if you just get into high school everything kind of switches from like how middle school was and so I think like just having a different mindset about being like okay like if I worked hard and I earned this grade I should be proud of it like no matter what it is like because that was hard for me to get overcome but like once I did that I was like okay wait it's gonna be okay because at least I'm learning now like it wasn't just yeah. about oh, okay let me get an A let me do this the best I could. like it's the best I can do it and so I think having that mindset from the start rather than having to like jump into it junior year being like what did I get myself into yeah. would yeah. be more helpful yeah that's fair I think yeah. definitely like freshman and sophomore year like I was just so scared to like go into like leadership roles because mm. I just didn't want to mess up and I felt like if I messed up then that would just cause like everyone else to just like be upset mm. so I feel like I wish I could have like went into those roles earlier or at least like experienced them a little bit and not like try to stay away <laughs> <laughs> from them like so hard out of fear yeah. yeah that's fair how about you guys anything you'd do different you'd probably join like more activities <laughs> right Risha like you'd yeah, probably like probably. just get into school culture yeah you know um I think something I kind of wish I did sooner was maybe like start a club um mm. whether it would have been like speech and debate or um, model UN or something like that because I've always known that that's kind of the path I want to go mm. down in my future and so I wish we kind of had something like that at our school yeah. that would have helped prepare me a little bit more for like at least speaking publicly um, doing research and stuff like that yeah do you think that there's space for that like do you think that if a student comes in as a freshman and they don't see a club that's offered do you think that now you're you know the players you know the school committee you know um the leadership here at the high school do you think that that's a possibility to start a program definitely i've had many conversations with mr riley and he's always open to hearing new club ideas yeah. and helping our students get them started if they really want to take the initiative to do that good that's great. Yeah. yeah. I would get more involved earlier because I only started getting involved this year. So I would uh, go to fundraising and I would go to um, new tryouts for new sports. And even with the school community, I would do something else because I only started this year. Yeah. So I feel like I could have um, enjoyed more. So what made you go from like not being super involved to getting involved senior year? I moved here from Brazil. Mm -hmm. 
sophomore year, so I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't know a lot of people, but then I met Risha, and then she was like, oh, we can do this and everything, and then I started to think, oh, that's, that could be fun, yeah. and then I started getting involved. That's awesome. So you only came here two years ago? Yes. Wow. Okay, so speaking as someone, so my, my master's, my whole background in education is teaching English as a second or other language, and I've been like trying to half learn Portuguese for like, I don't know, like, I don't know, 10 years. It's embarrassing. But one of the hardest things to do is to learn, uh, is to learn a second language, especially when you're like over the age of 10 or 11. It's just your brain, it, you're just, it's just very hard and overwhelming. So for you to be this fluent in English at, after just such a short amount of time, is remarkable. I'm not just like, that's my whole master's, that's my whole background. Thank you. I'm uh, like, huge congratulations to you. Um, your, your speaking ability, your super articulate, your like, your comprehension skills, that's incredible. And congratulations. To be completely honest, I don't think I would change anything about my high school experience. Like the other day, when it was like Thursday night, I was literally like, I was with some of my friends and I was just like quiet, like thinking back. Like there was, there wouldn't be anything I changed. Like I think I made the most of it. Um, I think I challenged myself with the courses I took. I think I was involved in the activities I wanted to be involved in. Yeah. I think I'd really like. I'm gonna. Whenever someone asks me like, "How's your high school experience?" I'm just gonna say like, "Oh, it was incredible. Like it was some of the best years of my life." That's awesome. What do you think you'll miss most about coming to Marlboro every day, walking in through that weird corridor or the back staircase now that you guys can like drive cars and stuff like that. So like, what do you think you'll miss most about being a student here at Marlboro High? I'll definitely miss my teachers the most because they were like the most supportive people ever and they've helped me through so many things and I don't know, they were just all so amazing. Like I've never had a teacher that I've like, that I've just not liked, mm. you know, like in like, a, like super like yeah. <laughs> bad way. Like, they're just all so amazing, and they've just helped everyone grow. That's awesome. That's great. What about you? I'm going to miss walking down the halls and just being able to smile at different people because, like, of all the things and all the people I've met along the way, and it's just so nice, like, being able like, all the familiar faces, even if it was, like, one thing we did together. And I'm going to miss, like, all those people and all the underclassmen that, like, made all my year so great because all the upperclassmen, like, my other years made, like, also made my journey so great. So I'm going to miss everyone. I think for me... Um, like the big events like Spirit Week, like um, like lunch, like all the end of the year activities, like I'll miss those, but like things I'll miss the most are just like the small like little moments like with teachers and students, like in, on like a Wednesday like morning in <laughs> class, like some off topic conversation that like involves the whole class and like even the teacher gets into it, like those little things like that I think I'll like cherish and miss the most. I think definitely I'll miss my friends the most especially because we're not going to see each other every day again. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are going to Florida or Mississippi and everywhere. So we're going to have to wait until reunion to see everybody again. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, honestly, everything that everyone said before me, <laughs> but also um, Unified. Mm. Emily, Gabe, and Jeff, I've known them since preschool. So just not being able to see them every day, they're the reason why I got into Special Olympics and why I've been so committed to it. So I'm really going to miss them and the classes and unified sports just so much. Yeah. And kudos to you for being so involved. Um, like, I've heard that even from the beginning, even from when you were a freshman, that there wasn't a ton of student involvement in it and that you just really ran with it that's that's really great thank you yeah my little sister is special needs and I was always we grew up going to special olympics events every saturday and throughout the week and I think that having family members and people close in your life um with diverse backgrounds and different needs really gives you a different perspective and so I feel like you know, your desire to be involved comes from an organic, natural, beautiful place, not from like, oh, what will the college want to see on my yeah. resume? And so, I mean, your name comes up a lot when it comes to Best Buddies and Special Olympics um, and being a unified school. So we, you know, we appreciate that. And that opens a door for so many other people to be involved in something that maybe they didn't really know about. And then they get here and like, oh, this is a great way for me to, you know, make friendships that are important and, you know, help out everyone. Yeah, I can confidently say that I wouldn't be the person I am today without Emily, Gabe, and Jeff and the program in general. Yeah. So you guys went to preschool and everything together? Yeah. Aw. Yeah. That's awesome. Which school? Uh, EC no, not ECC. ECC. Yeah. 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 And then what elementary school did you go to? Richer. Richer. Yep. 
cool. All right, so let's see. We went through pretty much all of the questions I had. Um, so now I want you guys to give advice to, imagine you're, you're presenting to the eighth grade class. They're not gonna wanna listen to you anyway. Like, <laughs> they're gonna look at you as like the cool upperclassmen stuff, but like you guys don't know because they're eighth graders. Mmm. <laughs> Uh, but if you could give them any advice, what would you, what would you tell a small group of eighth graders? Like, hey, next year, maybe try this or that. Yes, um, think. I would definitely say to like get into clubs and maybe join a sport or something because I've truly met some of my closest friends through clubs and through sports yeah. and they're, they're like one of the best, some of the best people I've ever met. Yeah. And even like try any sport, like. I did lacrosse for the first time as a junior, and it was so fun. Like, I was bad. You but joined it as a junior? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and I was horrible, but <laughs> it, was, it was so fun just meeting all those new people and having fun with a completely new group of people. I definitely agree with Rhea, and I think, like, just being nice to everyone around you. I know that sounds kind of, like, cliche or whatever, but I don't know. I made a lot of friends and, like, people just by being nice to someone and talking to someone once, and then, like, you have a new friend in, in your class or, like, you might have never met before but like you learn a lot about them and you have a lot more in common and you just kind of it, you're gonna see people all the time like Marlboro High seems bigger when you come into it but it's really small so I don't know just being like a nice person to other people and just like making new friends even like the most unexpected ways because you will and so you just have to kind of like get used to the fact that like you may have not been friends with the person before and you don't have to like everyone but just being like a nice person in general that's great that's great advice. I would probably say, it's like also cliche, but like don't be afraid to try new things. Cause like even after high school, like in life, if, in life, if you're going to college, like you're gonna get the same speech, like, oh, get involved with clubs, activities. <laughs> or even if you don't go to college, like in life, you're constantly presented with new things and you kind of like learn from them and build on them. So like, don't be afraid to tr try new things, new sports, new clubs. Cause like, it's also like the memories you think back to high school, is gonna be like at, at a reunion, you're gonna be like, oh, you might talk about a class, but you're gonna be like, oh, do you remember that game we played against this team? Like, yeah. those are the memories that like, you're gonna build on and tell your kids. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, well, I was actually gonna say the same thing as Luis. I feel like you have four years to make the best memories of your life. Mm -hmm. So definitely don't be afraid to try anything. Like, if you want to, if you think it might be fun, please try it, go mm -hmm. ahead. And if you don't like it, fine. It yeah. was at least you tried. Yeah, huge. Um, I agree with all of them. And <laughs> um, just to say something different, form connections with the adults in the building too. Mm. Um, it's really valuable, and you'll get some of the best advice you'll receive. Um, yeah, they're all of the teachers here are incredible, and they're very supportive. And support is something you need throughout these four years. So. Make yeah. those connections. 100%. Some of the teachers that I had, even when I went here, are still teaching here in the building. Mm -hmm. And like, so Mr. Downen was, he was such a goofball. I mean, I'm sure he still is. Still is. Yep. Yeah, right? The biggest dork ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I was in this random intermediate geometry class. It was just one of those, like, I just need to finish my math requirement. And he had a way of, like, I felt like the kid that didn't belong there. Like, I wasn't getting in trouble. I just, it was just, I needed the class, you know? And, um, but he had this way of still making me feel seen and important. And I would ask him like a really simple question and then he would answer like way above my head <laughs> and then see my eyes start to glaze over. And then he's like, oh, okay, or, and then he would just explain things in a way. But like, I still see him now. I'm like, hi, Mr. Downen. And he's like, hi, Jill. You know, like I can call him Jeff now. It's just still weird. But those teachers, you have those moments with, and um, speaking as a former teacher, we, we want to help all the kids. Like if you're working in education, you care about students, you want to make a difference, you care about your, your curriculum and everything, but you also do want to, to be, make an impact. So students that take the time to, to get to know the teachers a little bit and administration, it, it serves you, but it also gives so much back to teachers because it makes us remember why we you know, do what we do. All right, is there anything else anybody wants to say before we're done? No, no. Good luck to everyone. <laughs> Have fun. Enjoy it. It really, it really does go by yeah. very fast. I can't believe it's over. 
And no class will ever be as good as a 24 class. Yeah. Never. Oh, okay. All right. I, I think you're right. Uh, I totally agree. I can fully endorse the class of 2024 as the best class ever yes yeah yes all right well I'm, i can't wait to uh to see you guys graduate this sunday i'll be up in like the live stream booth so when you like walk across you'll see a camera person on the end mm -hmm. so like as you're getting your diploma like just like just keep looking around like we'll make sure that we that we capture that moment for you guys and honestly congratulations it's a it's a big deal and um to be involved in student government is huge because you really get to have an impact on what your junior year what your senior year is gonna be like and so you know we appreciate you guys being involved thank you, thank you. yay <laughs> clapping for ourselves all right that's awesome guys thank you that was really good